Welcome to my studio. I'm an artist. My name is Leonard Kozianski, and this is where I work. This is where I paint every day. This is where I paint my pictures. And I'd like to talk to you about a painting that I did a few years ago called 606. 606 has two meanings. A, it's a time of day, and B, it's the name of a running group. I run every morning. I run five miles every morning because I like doing it. It makes me feel good. But I also belong to a group of runners that meets at City Dock at six every morning and runs around downtown and around the Naval Academy. In order to get up at six and run five miles, you have to be either very motivated or a little crazy or a little bit of both. So in our group, we have a number of very interesting people, including the mayor of our fair city, Annapolis, Maryland, Gavin Buckley. And this is a picture of downtown Annapolis. Actually, it's Church Circle. Annapolis is a very historic city. There are a number of historic buildings. This is where George Washington resigned his commission as the general of the Continental Army. It was also the capital during the Articles of Confederation. Now, if you look at this picture, you see the church right in the middle of Church Circle, and I run through Church Circle thousands of times. And if you look at the steeple of the church, it points right to the governor's mansion. So, this is Church Circle, and it bears a very striking resemblance to this painting by Grant Wood, painted in 1931, called The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. There's an amazing resemblance between our church circle and this painting. So, when I was sitting in my studio on Granville Avenue, wondering, what am I going to paint now? I said to myself, Leonard Kozianski, why don't you do a painting about your daily life? And so how do I start every day? Well, I start with a five-mile run. Well, let's do a painting about running. So here was my first drawing. And in it, uh, I've got some runners and some foliage and a road and there's a cyclist. But I really don't know where this is going. I don't know really where this idea is headed. So I tried another drawing. And in this time, I said, well, where do you run? And I said, well, you run in downtown Annapolis and there's churches and houses. And so I did this drawing. This is pen and ink. It's in my sketchbook. It's like most of my drawings, about four by six inches. In the next drawing, I added more things, more houses, a church, and even the state house in the background. But at this point, uh, it was becoming a little complicated. Well, there's the runner. We can see a runner running with his dog. And at that time, I was running with my dog. My dog loved to run. So in the next drawing, I eliminated most of the houses and the churches and, and just concentrated on the state house. And to me, and the road, going off into the distance. And it was a good drawing, but it seemed to be getting a little bit too historic, building-ish. And that's not what I want. I was after something that was more idealized, something that would reflect sort of my impression of running in the morning. So my, I'm painting from memory. I'm not, I'm not looking at photographs. I'm not looking at any real objects. I'm painting this from my imagination, from my memory. So in the next drawing, I began to become more specific about the light and shadow, about the values. And I really like this drawing. In fact, I may do a painting of this drawing, but I didn't settle on this one. But it does have the boats in the foreground. It has the church. Uh, it has the road, light and shadow, it has the runner, and it goes back into a dark distance. So I'm getting close to what I'm after. 
So then I did this drawing, which I really liked, and I decided that this would be the study that I would use for my painting. So I drew a pencil grid over the drawing so that I could blow it up to a 30 by 40 inch size, which would be the size of my painting. And it also began to incorporate what I was after in the final painting, and here is the final painting, which is this 606 time of day is dawn. It's when we transition from night into day. And so when I begin my run, I'm very often beginning at night, and there are stars in the sky, and, and when I finish my run, the sun has risen and it's full daylight. So it's this wonderful transitional time of day when we go from night into day, and I wanted my painting to somehow reflect that, and I think it does. It's a surrealist image, it's very idealized, it's not real, it's more imaginary and reflects my inner experience as much as my outer experience of running in the morning. Now, in the study stage, in the drawing phase, uh, there are a lot of details that haven't been ironed out. A lot of things that need to be figured out, such as what's with that building there on the right that is circled? Now, from that picture of our running group, you saw that in downtown Annapolis is full of restaurants and coffee shops and cafes. And so in this drawing, I thought, well, what is that building going to be? I have to, you know, we can see the light coming out of the windows. Can we actually see inside that building? So at the time I was doing this painting or starting this painting, I was also on the Art and Public Places Commission for the city of Annapolis. And that meant that I had to go to a meeting once a month that lasted about three hours. And this meeting could be kind of long and boring, but we always had an agenda for every meeting. And so I sat there at this table with this agenda in front of me and a pen in my hand and I just couldn't help myself. I started doodling on the agenda, and then I actually started drawing on the agenda, and I started figuring out, gee, what's, what am I going to be doing with this painting I'm working on? And can we see inside the windows? And what do we see inside those windows? And, you know, is it going to be a, a cafe or a restaurant or something? So I was figuring this out as I'm listening to these people drone on and on and on during this Art and Public Places Commission meeting. Well, this is how I painted it. This is a detail of the final painting, and we can look into the window. We can see tables and chairs. Uh, it's obviously some sort of cafe or restaurant. The light pours out of the window onto the ground. Also notice that with the tree in front of the cafe, the leaves are very idealized. They're more like conceptual leaves. They're not like any real leaves that we would see on any real trees, which is fine because this is an imaginative recreation of an experience. Notice also that the grass is very idealized. Now, when I was doing the painting, it, pre it presented some technical challenges, like with that pier, that dock, how do you paint weathered wood? Well, I did it by first painting the wood with pure white, a thick pure white, and then scraping a, a, a wood texture into the white paint, letting that dry, and then glazing thin layers of a gray violet over the top of it to create that weathered look appearance. Also with the church, I wanted it to be a stone church, so I used my brush to create this sort of stony texture in pure white first, let that dry, and then I glaze thin layers of golds and yellows over the top of that. Same thing with the road. The road is made up of little dabs of white paint, which are then glazed with a blue-gray to create that low road color and texture. This is the middle ground. This is the circle. 
uh, one of the technical challenges in this painting, one of the interesting technical challenges, was how do you paint stained glass windows? Now, seen at night, they radiate color and imagery. Uh, they glow. During the day, uh, they don't. They look sort of flat and gray. So on the front of the building, I have these sort of flat gray stained glass windows. But then on the side of the building, in the shadow, I have them glowing with color and shapes. So how did I do that? Well first, well first, oil paint comes in two major categories. There are opaque pigments and then there are transparent pigments. So what I did here was I first painted the windows in a pure white, a flat pure white. Then when that was dry, using transparent colors, I painted the design of the stained glass window over the white so that it would look transparent. And it has a certain transparent quality, a glowing quality, which it wouldn't have if I had just painted it outright, straight, flat paint. Here's the runner. And here are the boats in the foreground. Now, the boats were an interesting challenge because I had to make them specific enough that we would know that they were real sailboats, but then not too detailed and not too involved with the fittings and the turnbuckles and all that. So I had to have the hatches and the hatch covers and the portholes. Also, with that boat on the left, that skiff, I had to come up with an idealized outboard engine. It had to be an outboard engine, but it couldn't be too specific because this was an idealized painting, as you can see from the way I rendered the grass. Also, the water was a challenge because the water had to have uh, the characteristics of water. So I gave it a watery color. Then I reflected some of the colors into the water that we can see, like the grass is reflected into the water, the red of the boat is reflected into the water, and over on the left, that vertical piling is reflected into the water also. Then I use horizontal strokes to suggest ripples. And together, this combination of color and reflection and the ripples gives a watery appearance to that part of the painting. In this middle ground detail from the painting, we can see the clock in the church and, of course, it's 6.06 .06 in the morning. And we know that it's dawn because in the distance, we see the night sky. And there's a car on the road with headlights on. And then as we come forward, the closer we get to the foreground, the more light it becomes, the more illuminated it is. So that this painting is able to express that transition from night into day. And here we have the finished painting. Again, it's an example of surrealism, a certain type of surrealism, an idealized surrealism. Now, because I'm a professional artist, when the painting is done, it has to go out into the world to enrich the lives of other people. I have to let it dry, and then I varnish it, and I frame it, and then I send it on the first stage of its journey out into the world by sending it to a serious art gallery. In this case, I sent it to the Bernarducci Mizell Gallery on West 57th Street in New York City. And there we can see the gallery up on the third floor. On West 57th Street, the serious galleries are always on the upper floors, not the ground level. This was a wonderful gallery. I love this gallery. I showed there for several years. They sold a lot of my work, including this painting, 606. They gave me a few shows. The two owners, Louis Mizell and Frank Bernarducci, were very intelligent, knowledgeable men who worked well with their artists. The gallery was in a great location. It was at the, near the corner of Fifth Avenue and West 57th Street. This section of New York is just dripping with money. And there's Tiffany's. It was a great location to have an art gallery. 
However, the two owners, Louis Mizell and Frank Lenarducci, two pillars of the art community, had a falling out and they closed the gallery, which was unfortunate for us artists because it really was a great gallery and a great location run by two very knowledgeable, intelligent men who knew their way around the art world and the art world knew them. The first time I ever brought paintings to this gallery, Frank Bernarducci met me and helped me bring the paintings into the gallery. And then we sat down and talked for a bit. And I said, Frank, you know, uh, I'm thinking about doing this and I'm, I'm thinking about doing that and maybe this. And he said, Leonard, he said, don't think, just paint. So I love that advice. And as soon as I got home, I wrote that on a card and I taped it up in my studio where it stayed for many years. It was great advice. Leonard, don't think, just paint. And there we can see it at the top of this photograph on that pink card. So that was why and how I came to do the painting 606. When you watch this video, before you see the video, they usually will have an advertisement. I don't get any money from that advertisement until I get a thousand subscribers in one year. And then YouTube will begin to share some of their advertising revenue with me. So you can help me out by pushing that subscribe button. And then you'll be asked to give your email address and then you'll be notified every time I publish a new video. Plus, if you like the, the video and share it or add comments down below, uh, YouTube will feature it more prominently in their suggestions on the suggestion side of the screen. So help me out and do that too. But thank you very much for watching this video about 606 and how and why I painted it.